So it's finally time to overclock the Ryzen R7 CPUs and this is basically going to be a guide for you guys out there so you can get the most performance out of your 8 core CPUs from AMD. Welcome back to Tech City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with an overclocking tutorial and I'm going to be up in the top right hand corner this entire time guiding you guys through this and this is going to be the first part where I'm basically locking in a very simple overclock that pretty much anyone should be guaranteed to do. Now keep in mind you will have to have a decent cooler, a decent motherboard and a decent power supply which I always recommend for overclocking. Myself here I have a EK240 Predator also on an X370 ASRock Taichi, and I've also got some DDR4 memory from Corsair, the RGB type. And with that said, let's move into the BIOS here. Now, the first thing I will say is that the BIOSes are different between different motherboard manufacturers. For instance, a Zeus Gigabyte MSI, they all have different looking BIOSes to the ASRock Taichi. Though, especially for this first part, a lot of the settings should be very similar. For the advanced part, which is part two, then that's when things will probably start to change a bit. Though if you have an ASRock board, you will have an easier time with this overclocking tutorial. Though with that said, we're up the top here, we hit the left and right keys. We can move around in the settings here. And the first place we wanna to go to is the OC tweaker tab. And now in here, basically we've got the uh, CPU frequency and voltage change. Hit enter and then change that to manual. And then we've got here 3.6 gigahertz already there. Since this is an 1800X, I believe a 1700X is uh, 3.4 gigahertz, and this is the all-core frequency, essentially. So what we want to do here is we can hit the minus or plus keys to change those values in 50 megahertz increments. So what we want to do here is boot this up or boost this up to 3.8 gigahertz. This is the clock that we're going to be going with and should work for the majority of people. And so we lock that in there, and then we go down here to load XMP settings. Now, I would recommend trying this later because... Uh, the Ryzen platform, the AM4 platform, is still in its infant stages, so memory overclocks are very unstable on some boards, especially with some brands of memory. For instance, when I first got my board in, I couldn't even get to 2600 megahertz on the memory, so now I can actually lock it in and get a solid 2933. But I'd recommend just leaving this off for now until you've got everything else working. Uh, AM4 Advanced Boot Training, I like to disable this as I find it just helps with, uh, even if you've got an unstable overclock, you can kind of get away with uh, booting back into the BIOS and quickly changing things. Otherwise you have to reset the CMOS and that can be kind of a pain in the ass on some of these motherboards. Uh, down here, voltage mode, we click this, enter. We wanna change that to overclock mode. And then down here, the CPU vCore voltage, a very important setting, probably the most uh, important setting along with your clock speeds is setting in a voltage for the CPU to run at. Now we hit enter and we go down here to fixed mode. And you can see here, I've actually already uh, booked in the voltage that you guys should be operating this overclock at if you just want guaranteed results. Of course, every CPU will differ. For instance, my CPU here at 3.8 gigahertz can do it at around 1.3 volt, which is a lot lower. So if you have the time to custom tune your CPU to its voltage, since it's a thing called just the silicon lottery where you can get a CPU that clocks higher at a certain voltage than another, then I recommend you doing that. But if you're just in your first time overclocking, you just wanna get some extra performance out of Ryzen, then I just recommend dialing in 1.37 there. And also CPU load line calibration. I don't know what's going on here. It was set on auto, now it's like gone back to level one. I guess that's a BIOS bug that we're live diagnosing here, but hey, uh, we wanna change that to level two. So on both fronts here, both the system on chip Load line calibration, change that to level two. And on the CPU load line calibration, level two as well. Now, this this is interesting because you can see here level one, I've found in the, in the past and even on this board, it does like to overvolt just a little bit. So level two I find is a great balance for when you're loading up the CPU, you get a thing called V-droop. Essentially the CPU drops down and this can cause crashing on overclock. So level two I find just keeps that voltage delivery just so smooth to the CPU. Uh, so we've got locked those in, both level two, both 3.7 there, overclock mode on the voltage. And then we're gonna go here and we're not gonna touch the overvolting or overcurrent protection. These are put in place to protect you guys from damaging your hardware. So I recommend leaving them on enabled unless you're a very advanced overclocker and you're probably not gonna be here if you are. But here we go here, we've got DRAM voltage. We can leave that on auto because we're not locking in the XMP profiles. And all the other voltages here, you guys can feel free to just copy my settings, copy paste, and put them in even though they are, I believe just stock voltages on these ones. So once you guys have locked in those settings, I then want you to go to the advanced tab up here and go to CPU configuration. Now, 
This is just a personal thing. I find it just helps with stability so much on even the AM3 platforms when I was overclocking them. Go to C6 mode and just disable that. And essentially, because we've got AMD cool and quiet already in place, that's AMD's version of uh, downclocking the CPU when it's not in use. So we want to disable that and then go down here to AMD CBS and then go into Zen Common Options. And now down here, we'll see Global C State Control. I also like to disable this completely too, as I find I have had some problems in the past, even when I was testing Ryzen initially, where games would crash with these settings on. So now that we're done there, we can go to Exit, Save Changes and Exit, and then reboot our computer into Windows. Now, if you also can't boot into Windows at these settings, you might want to lower the clock speeds just a little bit, and then or and or raise the voltage just a little bit more. So now that we're in Windows, we can essentially stress test our CPU to make sure things are working properly. So I like to open up a program called a hardware monitor. So this is free to download. It's easy. You don't have to pay anything for it. And it'll essentially tell you what your CPU speed, what the uh, AMD CPU speeds are running at. So we can see here 3.8 gigahertz, all cores. It's doing its job. And if we run into Cinebench, we can then start a Cinebench run just to check that it's uh, working. Um, of course, you would want to get a stress test program and run it for quite some time to make sure things are really stable. Uh, you can also jump into games, but I find Cinebench, even just running a quick Cinebench run is going to tell you if your computer is either completely unstable or near stable. So if it completes this run, it's either stable or near stable, which is a really good thing considering how quick you can get a reaction out of it, so to speak. So once we've done that, we can get our CPU score there. We can see it's pretty strong, 1624. That's the first part of this guide done. For the guys out there who just want to get a quick overclock, get some quick results, that's it. So now we're going to move over to part two where we're jumping into the BIOS and we're going to get advanced, baby. So now it's time for part two or the advanced part. This is where things start to get a little tricky. So if you start getting stressed, don't guys, I don't want you to get stressed because then you'll start losing your hair and, and you know, generally all the bald guys I know, they don't want to go bald. So I don't want you guys to go bald. Okay. So try not to get stressed. I'll guide you through this. So first part here, we're going to overclock tweaker and we're actually going to set this stuff that we did before back to auto CPU frequency and voltage change, change that back to audio. Uh, RAM speeds, we're not going to touch that just yet because we do that last after we've done our overclocks. And then here we can go to overclock mode, leave that there, go down to CPU V core voltage, change that back to auto, and then change this back to level two. I don't know why it changed back to auto. Uh, and then, yeah, that's about all we do in that tab. So we're essentially resetting what we did before in some parts and keeping some other settings in place. Uh, now we're going to the advanced tab here and we go to CPU, uh, no, sorry, we go down to AMD CBS. Then we go to Zen Common Options, and then we move in here to a thing called Custom Core P States, and we go Accept. So this is getting tricky now, guys. So basically what you want to do is I like to disable from uh, Custom P State 3 onwards. I like to disable that, and we go into Custom P State 0 first uh, and go to Custom here. So this is essentially where you're getting into the root of the CPU itself. P-State 0 is essentially that single core boosting methodology with XFR, but because we can take control of this and set manually set it with P-State 1 being the same values, but we'll get onto that later, we can essentially lock all cores in at our highest overclock for 24-7 stability. So what we've got here is essentially looking at a heap of numbers and they're essentially to do with a 30-bit, uh, 32 hex uh, sequence. Uh, so but the values range from 00 to FF, 00 being the lowest and FF being the highest. Uh, and it's weird because in P state uh, 0 VID, it actually works in an inverse relationship. If you go down in these values, you get the lowest denominator. I mean, sorry, if you go down in value, you get a higher V core. So it's kind of interesting there, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna lock in. So we can see here, we change from 18 to 17 and we keep going down. Uh, and the values here, essentially, I'll put these in the description below because this is getting tricky. All these values will set in a number of frequency and also voltage. So to get your head around it, I'll just put a list in the description below. You can read from there, but essentially it works with hex and you can, for instance, lock in a one and get a 4.025 gigahertz overclock. Or if we can go down to a zero, we should be getting 
a four gigahertz overclock. Now, before that, I think it will be 9F will be a 3.975 gigahertz overclock. So we're going down in the value and it's responding with the overclocks. The mid volume here, the DID, we generally don't want to touch that. Um, as I mean, personally, I've found that it running at the state B clock, this is essentially like your B clock setting. This at the state value of eight, is working perfectly fine. Everything's butter smooth. I have no need to change this. If you want to change this though, you may get, see, as we as we go up in value here, it'll actually lower the uh, clock rates there. So it's the, the values are a little bit tricky there too. So as you do that, you can change the B clock essentially. I like to leave it at eight. And essentially, if you do change this, just remember that it may change your memory clocks too. So I'd like to leave that one alone. So we're just going to focus on FID and VID and here we're going to lock in your desired overclock so for instance if you want a um, 9 gigahertz overclock it will be 9c and we'll get 3.9 gigahertz overclock or if you want to lock in my max overclock it's a1 so that's where my cpu topped out at guys was 4.025 gigahertz and the voltage for that i believe was 3.93 3.1 393 volts so that's where i ended up with my sweet spot you guys will have to tinker this to where you can find your max uh, cpu speed and where its sweet spot is for voltage that's up to you guys to find that this is where mine's at and i'll again i'll put those uh, codes in the description below so you can try and lock them in yourselves but once we've done that once we've found that with p state zero we can then go down to p state one and do the exact same thing for this value here and lock that in manually and what we'll have here is the exact same overclock with p-state 1 as p-state 0 and then for this last one we can also just leave that on custom and we can then have a 2.2 uh, gigahertz down clock so essentially when the cpu is not in use it will start throttling down and essentially using less power which is a good thing if you guys are going to be using this thing 24 7. anything below that i generally don't find the need for personally I just find it can sometimes cause problems and headaches, which you don't need when you're editing videos or anything like that. So that's my uh, custom settings there. I find it runs smooth as butter. Even in the infant stages of Ryzen, this thing is running so well. So once we're done with that, we can then save changes and boot into Windows. So now we're gonna move on into the benchmark here, F1 2016, which is actually a great benchmark for CPU and GPU at the same time, especially at 1080p. So we've got here the graphics options here. Uh, in video mode, we've got it uh, with SMAA on and also 16 speed anisotropic filtering and VSync off, of course. And then we've got here for the settings ultra high. Let's see how the AMD Ryzen CPU handles this at 1080p. Let's get in there and put that on benchmark mode. And while we're doing this, I'll actually test, uh, talk about some extra things with Ryzen. So, firstly, the memory. If you guys uh, have your CPU locked in at its sweet spot overclock, then what you want to do after that is go back in and uh, try and get your RAM as high as possible, which on the AM4 platform does make a little bit more of a difference than it does to the Intel platform. So you can do this easily by just enabling the XMP profiles. First up, that's the best thing you're going to get. Uh, if you can't do that, then drop your uh, timings, uh, sorry, I mean, drop your megahertz a little bit on the memory, say down to 2066. Uh, if that doesn't work, drop it down to 2400. I did have this problem initially when I got the AMD CPU in with the ASRock Gaming K4 where I couldn't even boot my memory up at 2600 megahertz so I had to drop it down to 2400 megahertz lo and behold a few BIOS updates later I can now run it at 2933 so you can see with the micro code updates coming into place memory speed should only get better and better which is a great thing also another thing is if you are crashing if your computer's crashing and you're just getting frustrated just take a breather it's normal guys especially when you're overclocking Though make sure all your hardware is connected properly. Things like a CPU that's not connected properly can cause permanent damage. Though if you have everything connected properly, then all you have to do is clear the CMOS with the pin, the jumper, just push that to the right and then back to the left, or the clear CMOS button, or worst case scenario, you can just take out the battery, turn everything off, the little circular battery, and you should be back to normal again. Remember, at these settings around these overclocks, you're not gonna damage anything if everything's set up properly because there's over voltage protections in place that protect 
your parts from getting damaged anyway. So I actually haven't come into any problems ever dealing with sort of these sweet spot overclocks. So that's a really good thing. Don't be too afraid, but it may get frustrating at times. Just keep that in mind. Also, there is the high performance mode in Windows, which you will want to turn on. And for me personally, I also like to turn off the USB suspend setting, which um, I have had on the AM4 platform so far my keyboard cutting out sometimes just randomly. So when I disabled this, I no longer had any problems with my keyboard or mouse cutting out. So I recommend you do that. And also if you want to, I highly recommend tweaking your windows for performance. I've got a Windows 10 optimization guide. I'll put a link in the description below for you guys. Awesome if you want to get that, just a little bit more uh, performance out there and get your windows running as best as it can. Other settings like high performance uh, or HPET, I'm not going to test that yet as again my computer is running really well at the moment. I don't need to really change anything. It's running completely smooth. So anyway, let's move on now to the next benchmark. And for the last benchmark is For Honor. We're going to run this at 1080p at ultra settings or extreme settings here. You probably hear that uh, GTX 1080 Ti reference blasting in the background. But I'm also going to talk about some final minute things with benchmarking Ryzen. And games as always, this is why I'm running the games for you guys. They're a fantastic way to test stability on your overclocks. Now, if you get a CPU 00, zero error, that's most likely because you either need to drop the clock speeds and or increase the voltages. So just keep that in mind. Another thing too is, is that when you are seeing these results on YouTube, like you're probably seeing it's a little bit choppy, uh, but trust me guys, on the monitor that I'm looking at right now, it is so damn smooth. It's just smooth as butter. And on the previous benchmark I did, uh, really one thing about Ryzen is it does play extremely smooth in games. So that's one thing I'm liking about this CPU at the moment. And this is even with a GTX 1080 Ti. You see there the GPU is being utilized near 100%, which is great news. For me personally, I'm going to be using this as a workstation CPU and also on my 1440p ultra wide monitor at 100 hertz. So if I get over 100 hertz or 100 FPS average, I'm going to be completely happy with that as I'm not really a competitive gamer nowadays, I'm pretty much a has-been. But with that said guys, if you enjoyed this overclocking tutorial, then be sure to hit that like button. And if you have any frustrations or anything that you have during the overclocks, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below or check out the website www.techcity.tv forum and we'll have some threads over there in terms of Ryzen overclocking. But with that said guys, I'm gonna get on out of here and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.